So I got a lot of work to do. I got to get these barrels ready. I think this rocket mass heater will have a number of benefits. If I can get this done, it would be fantastic. Oh, it's like molasses. Oh, oh no. Uh -oh. Whew, I'm a little nervous because once it's on, that's it. And it will be ready to rock. The main structure of the heater will be done. And then maybe we could start heating up some mass. Some what? Some mass. Oh. <laughs> Gotta heat up that mass. All right, y'all. Well, if you watched the last video, you know we had some trouble with the barrels that we tried using for the rocket mass heater. They were just oddly shaped. Luckily, I was able to source some new barrels fairly quickly. I had an idea of where to go and it worked. I mean, I really wanted those other ones to work because they were so cheap and so close by. These other ones I had to get from the city a couple hours away. Uh, it was a little bit of hassle and or more money, but we got them. So you could tell right away that these are vertical. There's no, uh, there's no taper onto these like these previous barrels. You can see how it's probably gonna be a little wider. So when I flip these barrels, they should fit together real nicely. Unlike these that have the taper, they didn't fit together when I flipped them. So I got a lot of work to do. I gotta get these barrels ready. Now, luckily I already have a bunch of experience cleaning these barrels and cutting them up. So I'm hoping this goes a lot faster than the previous barrels. I'm learning. Okay, let's check out these barrels. I like these barrel clamps too. They seem a lot more robust than the previous barrels. Whoa, this one has a lot of oil in it. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the ticket. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's like molasses. Oh, oh no. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got less of them. All right, I got these barrels prepped. I got a bunch of dry grass in there. I got a bunch of wood, a bunch of thorny, spiky wood that hurts your hands when you, even when they're gloved. But it, they're ready to go. I'm gonna light this up early in the morning when there's a uh, little to no wind. So that uh, right now it's just, it's ruckus out here with this wind, it's ruckus. Well, it's bright and early and it's already windy and it's only gonna, get windier from here. So uh, it's just, I don't feel safe trying to light up these barrels right now, but that's okay. The work could continue. I'm just gonna keep working on the walls. This is the new and improved interior plaster mix. Okay, we're gonna put in a... Um, pizza this sauce? Is, this isn't pizza sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Got some borax, we're gonna put in some borax, it's not pizza sauce. One cup, or half a pizza jar. That's how Americans measure things. No metric system out here. One, two, three, four. It's already thickening up. Sand. Let's get some horse caca in there. What? Horse caca. <laughs> horse caca. Okay. Some straw. Chop straw. Couple cans of that. 
How's that looking? Let's add a squanch more water. I think I might leave it out of that. Working on covering the walls is a great thing I can do, kind of like in between some other projects, you know, just when I got time, go in there, slap some plaster up. Good morning, y'all. Well, I was up before there was any light out here and I wanted to start burning these barrels. Couple of reasons. One, I wanted to get this done before any wind kicks up. And right now there's almost no wind. So I feel a lot more comfortable burning the barrels like this. Two, I gotta head out this morning. I wanna keep this Kia running uh, as long as I can and it's falling apart. So <laughs> the door handle actually ripped off the other day. So I gotta get that replaced. So it's a busy time, but I need to get moving on this rocket mass heater project. I wanna get this done so I can kind of focus on those walls. Uh, making good progress on there, but I just want to be able to just kind of get in there and knock it out. I think this rocket mass heater will have a number of benefits, not even just in the winter, but also in the summer. So if I can get this done, it would be fantastic. These barrels are even burning better than the last one. The paint is coming off much better. And I'm just going to use the torch here to kind of speed up some of the process here on the outside, kind of try and get a little lower on the barrel take advantage of the inside heat to help the outside burn. I also have the two barrels stacked side by side. I'm kind of hoping that while burning one barrel, that kind of gets the other barrel a little hotter and maybe they work together to help burn off any of that paint. All right, so a little bit later in the day, I bet just been letting these uh, barrels cool off. And now I'm just gonna dump the contents into one of our basins over by the house. So there are a number of differences between those other barrels I got and these new barrels. The old barrels are narrower and taller than these traditional 55 gallon barrels. And uh, I tell you, these, uh, these regular barrels, they burned up a lot quicker than the other ones. I don't, maybe it's just more room for airflow to get in. I bet you the pocket rocket would have worked really nicely for these traditional size barrels. Because the measurements are a little different, I do want to take a little extra time to make sure I'm getting the measurements right for the manifold and the upper barrel but this will help save me some time because I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can just take some measurements from the old manifold here and then apply it to the new one. Having that previous cut manifold to kind of go by for this new one, it's definitely gonna save a lot of time. Now, I took this, uh, the second barrel and just flipped it upside down. And this might be the way I go with creating the upper barrel. I, don't ha I won't have to do any cutting but of course this means that uh, there'll be less access. Like I won't have a removable top, but that might be okay. I might be okay with that because it just works so nicely down here between the manifold and the upper barrel. You gotta see that it fits perfectly. I think it'll be a much better seal. So we might go with that route. It is not for UV. It is not something for you. Tucking in your plants? Yeah. It's gonna be a cold one. Now what? You got one covered. The other issue is the grapevine. I heard it through the grapevine. Um, I heard what like a vineyard, uh, what would you call it, growers do if there's a late frost and the grapes have already started like budding out, they'll like just spray it with water 
when the water freezes, it actually keeps oh, the leaves warmer. Interesting. Because of the endothermic effect of the freezing. Uh huh. Um, but we cannot do that. So I guess I'll try to cover it. Need some help? <laughs> that face says it all. <laughs> She's like, Mom, you gotta play with me. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that. I got it. 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 No, you can't have it. You can't have it. But Daddy's got it. Daddy's got it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Jab to the crotch. I see the way you play. You play dirty. It is cold. It's cold already. Where's that one going? You take that in. Oh! Oh! I got gotcha. you. <laughs> it's your uncovering that, but now you need to give the chicken treats. Oh, damn! One of them little chickens just pecked the the big black one in the face. I was like, I was like, get out of here. That's bold. Evie said she wants to help too. What? Hey, hey, that isn't for you to chew on. I'm trying to protect it. That isn't for you to chew on. Hey, hey, get out of here. Start pruning a grapevine. Yuvi, come here. So you can see I'm using a pink cloth tape measure. This has been working out really well for measuring the curved edges of the barrel. All right, the manifold is cut, y'all, and it is looking fantastic. Of course, I still gotta bring it into the dome, get it on top of the bricks, and see if there's any adjustments I need to make, but uh, this went a lot quicker than the last one. Again, that's just that experience from having already cut one of these manifolds. Now it's just, it just made everything a lot easier. I've come to the decision, I just wanna throw this whole barrel right up on top here. I think it would just save me some time with cutting and everything like that. Just make it a lot less chance of failure with having too many openings. I just make it easier and more efficient. The optimal height above the heat riser where you want that barrel to sit is at least an inch and a half above that heat riser. I think two inches is optimal, but it can be a little bit higher. So I've made a mark on the wall here, approximately where two inches would be. So Jess and I are gonna put this barrel up there and then we're just gonna kind of see how it's sitting. 
That might be almost two inches dead on. What do you think? Uh, Could see you. Yeah, I mean, not, not quite an inch. Maybe a half, quarter to a half inch. So two and a half to two quarter inches above? Yeah, that's perfect, I think. So we're gonna take this upper barrel off now. I'm gonna put another hole in the manifold. Then I think we're good. I did finish cutting a hole in the manifold for the exit pipe and that's looking good. So next will be to get the manifold in place over the heat riser and then get the upper barrel and seal them together and then we will be golden. So I'm going to be working on the top of the dome pretty soon, working on adding more cob and plaster. I need a good way to work up there and move around. So uh, me and Jim are gonna take a ladder and put it up there. Now this is for the top of the dome, right? Yeah. Okay, I am ready to get this manifold into place. And to do that, I'm going to have to mix up some mortar, which is just going to be some clay and some sand. I'm going to have to make a bunch of that. And then I had some clay slip from the last time I was going to set the manifold, but I just got to re-wet that, get that ready to go. So phone call. All right, y'all, I got the mortar, I got the clay slip, and I'm ready to get the manifold in place. All right, I'm going to clean up this uh, brick pad a little bit, and then we'll get to work. Whew, I'm a little nervous because once it's on, that's it. Then once the uh, manifold's in place, we'll get the uh, top barrel on, and uh, we'll be ready to rock. Be ready to move on, finally. Okay, so now that I got the, uh, the manifold kind of cleaned off a little bit more, time to put it in place. Now that's sitting on top of the uh, mortar mix, what I'm just gonna do is just make sure uh, everything is in place and then we're just gonna kind of squish it down. There we go. Now that that is in place, we're gonna add more mortar mix kind of up and around the barrel here. So I wanted to get that mortar about five inches or so up around that manifold. I also kind of used it to kind of just seal up any of the cracks, especially right around the front. So I got all those edges around the bricks sealed up. So the mortar's going all the way around the barrel, and now I believe it's time to put up the upper barrel. Brother, sister, duo, look at this teamwork, oh. So this is the new mix, and uh, just kind of fix this area up. And we're kind of going back over just some of that old mix that was cracking real bad. And uh, this is looking fantastic. And you guys are doing a tremendous job. Does anyone care to like take a bow or something like that? <laughs> Man, I really love what you and Peter have done with the uh, walls over here. Yeah, I'm liking how it's looking. I haven't seen any cracks in there at all, which is a really good sign. I think it's gonna be nice. I'm looking forward to getting the rest of the wall covered up. So as so you were saying, the mix didn't, uh, there's no cracking. How did it feel applying it? Pretty good. I think we got a good recipe. Like adding the sand really helps with the, the cracking, but you know, the more sand you have in there, the harder it is to get it to stick to the wall. It's a really delicate balance of keeping it sticky, but also keeping it from cracking. Yeah, so you, you want more of that clay in there to make it sticky, but too much clay causes the cracking. So I think we got a good ratio, and adding the 
fiber in there really helps keep it all together too. I think a couple of people had concerns about the adding the borax into the mix, but it's not that much borax and it's there just to help prevent mold. It's not going to be poisonous to anyone living in the dome and it'll help prevent mold. So it's just a precautionary thing. Even though I don't think we're going to get much moisture in here, it's just a precaution. Yeah, I definitely don't want um, mold in the walls. <laughs> That's pretty toxic. No mold in the walls. <laughs> All right, y'all, today is the day. Jess is out here with me. I got the man the manifold set and in place. Now time to put the top barrel on and uh, then we can lock it down, seal it up, and uh, the main structure of the heater will be done. And then maybe we could start heating up some mass soon. Some what? Some mass. Oh. <laughs> Gotta heat up that mass. I have here a stove gasket cement and that will be used to hold down the gasket so that no heat can escape between the manifold and the upper barrel. So I'm going to start it here. And then I'm just going to work my way around, kind of firmly pressing this into place. All right, so we are going to set this barrel into place so that it helps seat the uh, gasket in there. Then we'll just kind of leave it sit there for a little bit. Then we'll pull it off so that this whole uh, gasket thing can air dry. Uh, Jess is back out here with me. We just let it, let it sit in here for what, about 10 minutes or so? And uh, now we're gonna, just to let it get that gasket firmly in place. Now we'll just let it pull it off so we can, it can air dry and settle. Okay. All right, how's the gasket look? Is it still in place? Looking good over here, all right. We're just gonna let it air dry for about an hour and then we're good to go. Then we can uh, seal this thing back up. All right, just should be here in a bit, but I'm gonna get this ring in place. And we are about ready to lock in the upper barrel. Oh! <laughs> Crew's running around like a crew in a china shop. Okay. There's a screw and a nut that goes in here to kind of lock things in place. This actually looks kind of bent up too. This is the one that came with the barrel. Basically, I'll pick up another one of these and uh, bolt them together. But uh, the clamp is on. How do you feel about this, Jess? It's very cool. It's, uh, it's all in place. So very exciting. Uh, obviously a little setback with getting the wrong barrels before, but now we got the correct barrels and the rocket mass heater is looking very nice. Pretty excited to see it uh, come along this far. I think most of the technical stuff is situated and now it's gonna be uh, kind of fitting the uh, piping together get that run onto the outside and then the cobbing process that might take a lot of work. For the most part, we're, uh, we're pretty much got this licked. Stay tuned as we come to the conclusion of the rocket mass heater build up. Crazy exciting. So definitely give us a thumbs up for rocket mass heaters and we'll catch you in the next video, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Still got our gloves on. Safety first. Thumbs up for safety.